Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker and this is a demo. This is not intended to be therapy. This is not advice for anyone. This is just in, for your entertainment only to see a role play of inference-based cognitive behavior therapy. If you are looking to work with someone who provides ICBT, please go to the icbt.online website. So this video starts off with ICBT module two. I do start off those, my sessions with a review and an agenda building. And so you'll see there that I do check in with the clients to see if there's anything pressing before I dive into each module with the client. If you're wanting to skip ahead and, or maybe even to watch this video faster, it's, I share this on YouTube so that you can up the watching speed. You can make it two times faster if you want to get through this much quicker, but these videos are intended for those who really want to see the full session. And we're like demystifying what ICBT treatment looks like. This is a very basic session, just to give you an idea of how we help clients understand that their OCD doubts don't come out of nowhere. According to ICBT, there's a reasoning process at play, and that's what we that's what we work on in this session with this client. This is the third time I've met with the client, but it's the second time I've met with them providing ICBT. So in the very first consultation, I provided the, I showed them the ICBT iceberg so that they understand that we're targeting inferential confusion and what that consists of, which we've got the narrative, we've got logic, we've got the vulnerable self, and we've got the distrust of the senses in the self. Okay, so that is all part of what we're going to be targeting in treatment. And module two is targeting the logic, the reasoning process. Okay, and, and so throughout treatment, we're going to try to come at each piece of the inferential confusion to try to resolve it, but it is a stepped process. And so last session, last week, I worked with David, we introduced the sequence, the obsessional doubt sequence, and that is the intervention. The client is learning that there's a sequence there. They're able to see that this isn't just, I'm just triggered. They're able to see that there's a whole process at play. There's a prompt, there's an obsessional doubt, there's a consequence, there's anxiety and discomfort, and then there's a compulsion. So David learned that last week. And when I started session with him today, we reviewed that and he was able to track his own obsessional doubt sequence. And he was able to see that um, for himself. And he was able to reflect and say, what would remain of my OCD if the doubt were, were false? And because he was able to demonstrate that he's tracking that, I felt comfortable to move forward with him into module two. There are times that you might be working with a client and we may not get through the full module in the session. We might bounce around a little bit. It really depends on your client's needs. And so always use your clinical judgment for what you're thinking the client needs in that session. Okay, we're not trying to force the client into ICBT treatment. We're trying to modify the treatment for what our clients need. And so there's flexibility there. So module two is, is what we focus on today. And I am going to put some text in each, each part of the treatment to help the clinician understand this is what we're covering here. And then I just use the ICBT modules for, for myself. I don't use other, other formats. I just pull that up in session. And then I will send clients like maybe some other graphics and things like that. Or maybe sometimes I will share different graphics later on in treatment. But the modules work pretty well, breaking it down for the client. Feel free to use whatever modules you've put together, what other creative graphics that are helpful to make the point. We're working with a very broad uh, range of clients and their needs. So modify this therapy to help the client understand what the point is that you're trying to make here, which is that OCD doesn't come out of nowhere, that there's a reasoning process at play. How's it going? Oh, well, how are you? Good. Well, let's build our agenda today. This is our second session of ICBT. And let's go ahead and see what we would like to cover. I've got some ideas. Do you have anything that you're wanting to add to the agenda today? Nothing that I can think of specifically. I'm just, I just want to continue with the progression of the, of the modules that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's add that. 
I'm thinking, would it be okay if we add review? We'll talk a little bit about what we discussed last week, and then we can go through, based on the review, we can maybe roll into ICBT module two. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And then we'll leave some time at the end for feedback on the session and anything we can do differently to make it better. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we've got an agenda. So let's dive into review. Last week, we talked about ICBT module one, which was building that sequence. And yes, the sequence. Mm -hmm. And you were going to see if you could track some of the symptoms throughout the week. And I was curious, were you able to track any of those symptoms? Yes, I was. Yeah, it was very interesting. And I was able to pay attention to things that happened to me during the day and put them into that sequence but with the prompt and the doubt and everything. So that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay if we, did you bring those with you? Like, did, did you write them down? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, would it be okay if we, if we pull those out now and we go over them a little bit? Sure, yeah. Okay. I can even, do, do you have the packet there or would it be helpful if I share my screen and pull that up? Sure, yeah, if you want to share. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that briefly. Just a moment here. Right. Can you see my screen here? Yes. Okay. So just a, this is just to refresh our brains. Uh, we did the sequence last week. And yeah. so we have the, the internal, external, the trigger, prompt, the doubt, consequences, anxiety, discomfort. Okay. All right. I'm actually going to stop sharing the screen here so that I can see you. And then I just wanted to give a, our brains a little visual reminder there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have so, the printout with me too. Okay, so perfect. That. Okay. Yeah, let's go through it. So I would be really curious to hear what was it that, and maybe we'll just maybe share one or two okay. today, and then we can actually use it for the work we're going to do in the second module. Yes, this past weekend, we went to a birthday party. Mm-hmm. And they were cutting the cake. We were all, all there and they were cutting the cake. And, you know, it was a, a, a knife that they were using to cut the cake with. And that made me very, very anxious because what if I could get out of control somehow and I would just grab that knife and start stabbing people just out of nowhere. So that made me, I got like a sinking feeling in my stomach. And just felt, I just wanted to, to just, I don't even know what to do. I just wanted to disappear. And, and you know, I kind of like try to get reassurance from my wife to, I made some conversation with her to see like how she, if she's perceiving me that I'm acting any different. And oh yeah, and then I, I, I was taking pictures at the party. So I took a bunch of pictures. And then when we got home, I checked the pictures to see that nobody was bleeding or stabbed in them. So let, yeah, let's break it down. So your prompt, what, what did you track for your prompt? The way I saw it, it was when we started cutting the cake, the party, and it was, okay. they're cutting, cutting it with a knife. Okay. So seeing a cake get cut. And then what was your doubt? What was your what if in that moment? Well, I had to think about it. So the action, I guess the consequences would have been that I could start stabbing people, but then the doubt would be that like I lose control because that's how I could start stabbing people. Just like I get, I just lose control of myself and I just start stabbing people. Okay. So your doubt was what if I'm out of control? What if I've yeah. lost control? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like what if I lose control right now and I just grab that knife and start stabbing people? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. And then what was your discomfort? You, you, you mentioned like you had a lot of anxiety. What, yeah. like what was going on for you? What was your I feeling? Thought, really awful i got like a sinking feeling in my stomach i just kind of like like panicked because i felt like it was like so plausible you know mm -hmm. so yeah i just got like this kind of panicky anxious feeling like a sinking feeling in my stomach and i just felt you know i i just felt totally different in a bad way Oof, yeah yes you felt bad 
Okay. And then your compulsion, you said that you, you were checking something to make sure no one was like stabbed or bloody. Yeah. I was taking pictures. Okay. And when I got home, I, so I, I started taking more pictures after I got this feeling. And when I got home, I checked, I went through them a bunch of times and I like, I magnified, you know, to see everybody like in the pictures to make sure that nobody was bleeding or stabbed. Okay. All right. So there's your sequence. Good job on practicing, you know, applying what we learned from module one. How was it for you to have like that difference? Because you, you, before you didn't know about the the sequence, right? Like before we started treatment. And so a lot of times with OCD, like we, you know, we know that we feel really scared in that moment. How was it for you to, to now see it as a sequence? It still sucked. And you know, it's still very unpleasant and tormenting, but I was still, you know, I had that sequence in my head. So I tried to, I was, I was able to have a framework. So I try to break it down and to see the different parts of it and put it together to, to, to see how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. So I had something to go on to where I, I could, you know, make it into something like a framework for how, how I get to where I am, where I'm feeling so bad about, about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were able to see, oh, here's the prompt. Here's my doubt. Here's the scary thing. Here's the consequences. This is how I'm feeling. Were you able to do that reflection activity where you pause and you say, what would remain of my sequence if the doubt were false? I did that a little bit afterwards, when after we got back from the party. And I, I thought about a little bit. So yeah, it was like, you know, what if what if the doubt were false? Well, then I probably, you know, the party would just go on and I would just not be scared of these things uh, of losing control and stabbing people. And then I could just have a normal time at the party with my wife and I wouldn't devote so much energy to like trying to figure this out and taking pictures. And, and then I got like secondary doubts about what if I was acting weird at the party taking so many pictures and then like people thought I was weird and you know so it seems like it just compounds itself yeah yeah okay yeah. Well, excellent job tracking your, your, your sequence. And today, you know, diving into module two, well, we can use this. Is it okay if we use this for our work today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, yeah, let's dive in. So we, now we've got a sequence to work with and we're going to, now let's dive into module two. Okay. Can you see my, can you see my screen sharing client worksheet two? Yeah. All right. Great. Today, we're going to talk about the logic behind OCD. And if you've, if you've listened to podcasts or read blogs about OCD, which we talked a little bit about that in the free consult, that you've done a lot of information, learning on OCD, you've done a lot of reading on it, you've done a lot of listening to different podcasts and and stuff. You may have come across a lot of people saying there's no logic to OCD, Mm -hmm. right? It's It's if you try to figure it out the hole gets deeper and deeper. Okay. Right. Yeah. You hear that a lot. In ICBT, we're saying, well, actually there's, there is logic and we all use logic and we all use reasoning to understand our day to day. You're right. Yep. Okay. And, and we're not saying that the, the logic is like appropriately used in a context because there's something that is like, out of context about OCD, but we're not going to talk about that a whole lot today. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn that there is actually reasoning in these obsessional doubts. Okay. And I'm going to skip through some of these uh, paragraphs because you'll have them to, to read outside of session. So we're just going to summarize and we're going to move through. Okay. Okay. So we've, we've narrowed down some pretty common reasoning categories we see in OCD. Can you see this here where there's one through five? Yeah. Okay. These are pretty common reasoning categories in OCD. 
it's it's not everything though it's as you can see here the the last category is it's possible and that's pretty broad mm -hmm. but we do see quite a bit of abstract facts reasoning general rules which are like the shoulds that our reasoning process is like oh we should we should do it this way this is a rule hearsay is like the stories we've heard personal experience, pretty self-explanatory. Like these might be reason, like when someone says, oh, I, I don't like going to this store. They're mm -hmm. going to have reasons for that. And they might actually have personal experiences for why they don't like to go to that store. These are pretty common reasoning categories we see in OCD. And I'm going to show you an example here. All right, one through five here. Can you see that okay? Yes. All right. Go ahead and read through those, and then we're going to chat about this. Let me know once you get through all five. Okay. 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 This is someone who has contamination concerns. Mm -hmm. This is someone else's, someone else's doubt is informed by these reasons. If I was to ask this person and say, oh, no, don't worry about it. You're not going to get, you're, it's not going to be contaminated. No problem. Their reasoning process is actually like, uh-uh, mm -mm, germs exist. Mm -hmm. Their reasoning process is like, no, no, no. Surgeons are supposed to wash their hands. Obviously, I should be worried too. Okay, their reasoning process is going to say, I heard someone getting sick. Obviously, OCD has a point because it's using these reasoning categories. So this is what we're looking at today is we're, we're saying, these doubts don't come out of nowhere. They're not like these random thoughts that everyone has. ICBT is saying that your obsessional doubt actually is arrived at because of these reasoning categories. Have you ever heard of the word intrusive thought? Yeah, I think that was in some of the like podcasts and other stuff that I've done about OCD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intrusive thoughts are thought to be like the start of OCD in some models mm -hmm. that it's like it's like an appraisal of of this thought that everyone has so the idea behind that is like everyone has these random thoughts they become intrusive when we give when we do the appraisal which is like the consequences okay but what ICBT is saying is that your intrusive thoughts are actually like, we're saying, well, that's not the problem. We're saying we're gonna go upstream to that doubt and that doubt is arrived at because of these reasons. So your intrusive thoughts are actually, like ICBT saying, those are actually inferences of doubt, which are like reasoning conclusions. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so this is a little bit different than saying OCD is just random thoughts that we appraise a certain way. We're saying, oh no, you've got reasoning happening and the and and this could actually kind of explain a little bit you know we're not sh we're not completely sure but the idea is is like this could explain why you have a specific theme that's different than someone else's theme okay that makes sense your ocd is different than someone else's because of a lot of a few few things that are part of that inferential confusion that we'll learn about as we go but one of them is the reasoning process that you have Okay. I want to go ahead and point out a little bit here where abstract facts, these are just kind of like, you know, germs exist. Okay, it's just right, kind of right. abstract, like this floating idea. Okay, the rules are the shoulds. Hearsay mm. is like the, the stories we've heard. Experience is your personal experience. And OCD loves this one, the good old it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay. What I'd like to do, if you're willing to, is let's plug in your reasons. And like, we're gonna let your, o we're gonna let your reasoning process speak its mind. We're gonna let OCD speak its mind. Would you be okay to do that? Yeah, yeah, I, I would. Okay. Let's do it. We've got your sequence. Mm -hmm. So we can go off of this one. What if I'm out of control? Okay. Okay. What if I'm losing control? If I was to say, David, don't worry about it. You're not losing control. 
what's OCD going to have to say? Ooh, okay. So I can look at these different categories and yeah, I can, I can see it in my own and how I like think about this. So and people lose control. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's actually a thing that happens, you know, it's, we know about it. It's, it's something that actually happens in life. People lose control. So I think that would be like the abstract. Yeah. What about rules or shoulds? Do you have any of those? And it's okay. Like your, your obsessional doubt might not have all of these reasoning categories. It's okay if it doesn't, yeah. but we're letting OCD speak its mind. So maybe all of your reasons will just be abstract or maybe all of them will just be the good old it's possible. But if there's any of these other ones, like let's make room for them today. We want to hear about them. Okay. You know, for like the rules, you know, there's rules about there, there's laws, right? There's laws like if you like, there's laws against violence against hurting others because you know we're not supposed to harm others. We're supposed mm-hmm. to you know protect others, protect our families, and not harm people. Mm-hmm. Very good. So when I'm like, oh David, don't worry about it. You're not going to lose control. You're like, yeah, but people should make sure their family is safe. People yeah. should keep other people safe. Yeah, I mean, there's you know we have these rules for a reason. We have you know the justice system for a reason because mm-hmm. people should do these things. And then do you have any hearsay? Like, what about if I was like, ah, oh, no, don't worry. You're not going to lose control. Does your reasoning process have any like really good juicy stories that make it seem really credible? Yeah. A few years ago when I was like 21, I was talking to my cousin and he told me how like once he couldn't remember what happened for three days. So like he had no, he had no control. He had no, no memories of what happened for three days straight. Yeah. You know. Um, mm, yep. And, and see, we're saying, wow, you know, your reasoning process is using that as a strong citation for this doubt. It's mm-hmm. given this doubt an, an extra punch to say, oh yeah, no, this is possible. Yep. Okay. What about personal experience or any other hearsay, any other, any other stories that come up when I'm like, oh no, David, don't worry about this. You're not going to lose control. You know, like you hear, you read articles or you hear news stories about people who just, you know, lose, lose control. But the one with my cousin was like really poignant for me. Mm-hmm. It's like the, it's like the, the one that sticks around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then personal experience. He's like experience? a good guy, you know, like he's not the kind of person who would do something but you know like totally had no control oh good Ooh, yeah you're noticing like like in your reasoning process it's like these things can happen to people who day to day aren't bad people but yeah they can still lose control yep okay he's not the kind of guy who'd be like well we don't don't trust that guy you know don't don't let him around like dangerous things you know not at all yeah. What other reasons? If I was like, let OCD, let that reasoning process come through. Yeah. So experience, you know, I had a few years ago, I got really angry. I was having an argument with my wife. I got really angry and I literally felt like I didn't have control. Mm-hmm. I could do anything, you know, and, and I just felt like overpowered. Um, mm-hmm. And then like another one was when we went on vacation, we got on a plane and, you know, I, I fell asleep on the plane and next thing I knew the plane had landed. So it's not I fell asleep, but it's like, I have, I just like, you know, the whole trip, I wasn't, I had no agency that whole trip. I was just like out. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, you know, again, wasn't in control for, Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that plane are, like a few hours. Yeah. Ooh. And traveling is such a good example of where we're out of a routine and, and we can like really feel even more vulnerable when we're traveling. And so it's like, you know, you mix that up. It's you, you were really like, you know, you were saying, you're like, I know I slept, Mm -hmm. but what if, and, and it, in, in OCD uses this to convince you today that this could be going on today. I could be mm-hmm. out of control right now. So this is a strong, strong citation. Okay. What about anything else? Like any other possible possibility reasonings? Yeah. You know, thinking about my cousin's story, you know, you know, anything's possible. Right. But thinking about my cousin's story, like he's my cousin, we're related. We have, you know, we share genes. 
So if something like that could happen to him, where like he just totally like blanks out and doesn't remember, like it could happen to me too. Mm hmm. Yeah. So in your reasoning process, it's well, you know, it's possible because my cousin doesn't remember a few days and I could also be in the stage right now where I'm not remembering this. I could already be out of control and, yep. and it's possible because we're also related. Mm -hmm. So there's a genetic factor there. Yep. Good. What do you think about this where we're, you know, we're showing you, <laughs> we're showing you how OCD is like almost like one of the good tricks. It, it packs a punch. And when you're having that obsessional doubt, it's like all of this is going on in that, in the reasoning process, that's making it really hard not to believe this, this doubt. Yeah, it's very convincing and it's, it's very persuasive, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I just find myself thinking, you know, I could just, you know, I could wake up and, and, and have no memory of, of having stabbed a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay. So we're, we're showing one of, we're showing the tricks of OCD and let's, let's go down here. I want to show you, and again, you'll have this, so you can read through, you can read through this more thoroughly. We're, we're covering it generally in session, but I want to show you this other example. Okay. This is someone else with OCD mm -hmm. whose reasoning process uses, you know, the same different common categories, but this is for someone who con has concerns about waves of contamination from metal objects. Go ahead and read through this and we'll talk okay. about it. Okay. Okay. What did you think of seeing that? It doesn't like right now you're, it doesn't seem like you're having obsessional doubts con like relating to contaminants mm -hmm. from metal. So what was it like for you to see someone else's reasoning for their obsessional doubt compared to like yours? for what your obsessional doubts? Honestly, it was preposterous. It was like ridiculous. It seemed like it was like, it didn't like make, you know, I guess I could see it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't convincing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yours are convincing. Would you say that yours are convincing for you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. What's the difference here? What's the difference between yours and, and this one? I don't know what it is, you know, maybe because it's just something totally different. It's, it, it's not, it's not about sharp things. It's about something It's about the waves from metal objects. And to me, that's just, I have no issues with that. So just the whole thing seems like it's all speculative and, and just preposterous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying that last week too, where it was like yours feel more real. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you know, you, you've probably heard this in the podcast where it's not uncommon for us with OCD, where we're like, man, I wish I had that other theme. Cause that theme wouldn't bother me at all. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. It's like, I wouldn't care about like <laughs> metal objects. I wouldn't care if I walked by like a metal mm -hmm. tower or something. I'm right. good. Yeah. I wish I had that theme. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty common. And you know, as, as you know, you can change its shirt too, you know, like we're going to learn about this in the treatment where that inferential confusion that you, you and I talked about in the free consult, like we did the little iceberg. One part of that iceberg is the vulnerable self. So we're going to get, we're going to get more into that as we go through treatment. But, you know, again, we think that this kind of ties into like why people have different themes, quote unquote themes. And, you know, as you can see here, your reasoning process is very different than, than someone else's, but OCD uses the same tactics, no matter the theme, mm -hmm. right? What, what is different is you, your lived experience, your vulnerable self, your reasoning, like the content of your reasoning, but you still use the same reasoning process. Yeah. Okay. So we're, ICBT is really looking at the process here. And, and so no matter what the content is, it follows the same, the same trick. Uses that makes the same sense. Trick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, putting, breaking it down into these different reasons. Mm -hmm. It's very, you can definitely see the same last time. Now I can see the structure and like how the reasoning process goes and the different, yeah. like the different justifications that, that come up for, to reinforce this doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Reinforcement, right. These are like the, the big reinforcers. One way that can help us understand like the, the reasoning and the logic is have you ever done, I'm going to come back so I can see you for a second. Let me stop sharing this. All right. 
So have you ever done like a research paper or a report? And then your professor says, you need to go get peer reviewed, high quality citations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember from the iceberg in the free consult, the, the, the inferential confusion iceberg, one part of that, like we were talking about, there's a vulnerable self. Another part is the narrative. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so we're going to learn about that next session, but there's a story here. We saw the other David's story last week, right? He's got a little, he's got a story. Yeah. Um, everyone with OCD has a story and this here, the logic is the citation. It's the peer reviewed, like really. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's those high quality references. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. Footnotes, references, citations. Okay, this is the reasoning process. Tell me a little bit about like, why would a teacher or professor or anyone who's looking for credible sources, why would they want you to find that? What's the point of having strong resources? Well, because that those are, they bolster the thesis of the research paper mm -hmm. and they lend it credibility and persuasiveness and and prestige. Mm -hmm. And your doubts, <laughs> right? Your doubts also get that with your reasoning process. Yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, you're, you know, they're the citations. That's an easy way to think about it is like your own reasoning process brings in the big guns with these, this logic. Yep. Yes, it does. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering if maybe now we can do, let's see, I'm going to pull up the, I'm going to share my screen again. All right. And we're going to pull up. Okay. Can you see this screen here where I'm moving it and it says example? Yes. Okay. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to take, here it is. We're going to put ourselves in the mind of another person with OCD, kind of like we did last week where we use other examples. And the reason being is like, sometimes we can, we can understand OCD from our personal experience, but also it gives us some context if we look at it at someone else's experience as well. Okay, here are two examples. The first one, I might suddenly lose control and hit someone else. Okay. The other one is I might, there might be broken glass in the meal I prepared for my children. Mm -hmm. okay. We're not gonna do the first one. That one's very similar to yours. So let's go yeah. with the one. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up so you can see the examples again, but let's keep in mind, this is gonna be about, this is a parent who has doubts. What if there's broken glass in the meal I'm making for my kids? Okay. Okay, so their doubt is, what if there's glass in here? Now let's look at, what would be their abstract fact maybe? Their abstract fact would be, you know, glass shatters easily. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of glass in the house, things like that. They just you know, kids trust me and you know, they're not going to check. Yeah. What about some rules? This is a parent who has doubts about, you know, what if there's glass here and, you know, they keep checking. So what could be a should that that parent is dealing with in their reasoning? You know, parents are supposed to be conscientious about safety for their kids. They're supposed to protect their kids. That's like the main thing of being a parent. So protect, protect their children, make sure that they're taken care of, make sure that they're not in danger, make sure that they have, you know, food to eat without danger in, involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about hearsay? Any, what, what could be some like hearsay reasoning that that person is dealing with or having? Um, you hear about stuff happening all the time where, you know, parents are, are negligent. They they take their eyes off their children or they don't pay attention when they're doing something for their children. You know, bad things happen. Like they, the children get hurt somehow. They eat something that's harmful or they fall or things like that. Mm -hmm. And then what about personal experience? What could that parent have had, like maybe some experience with in the past that could make this like really believable? Maybe it's something like they they had some experience with they remember like sh shattered glass somewhere like on the ground or something or maybe they from other parents they heard stories about how the parents wasn't other parents weren't careful or something like that mm -hmm. 
any possibilities? What's another one where they might be like, well, if I was to tell that person, oh no, don't worry about it. There's no glass in there. Maybe they'll remember something, you know, it's possible. They, they, they did something else careless the other day when, but it wasn't such bad consequences, but they, you know, they, they did something or yeah, or they could, you know, there, there's always a chance that they, they're going to let their guard down or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's possible. So I can't remember. There's, I feel like there's all these news stories from, you know, years ago where we would watch TV and they'd have, I don't know if it was like the real stories of the ER or something. And like mm-hmm. people would like show up to the ER and they'd have like, right. Yeah. They have all kinds of crazy stuff. Like they swallowed of, something, you know, right? like, yes, they just different things lodged in their guts or something. And <laughs> yes, uh, like all kinds of weird stuff that they, people mm-hmm. go to the ER for. Yeah. And in in today's world, you know, in social media, we get, we have access to all these stories all the time. And so it's, you know, the hearsay can be really for a lot of people in their obsessional doubts, right? Yeah. They could just do a YouTube dive of all kinds of different videos of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So you now know how to check out the logic of other OCD doubts and then your own. And so let's scroll down here. What was, let's do a little reflection, compare the reasons you came up with for yours and the one for the glass, are they mm-hmm. different? Are they similar? I mean, for me, they're different because the ones for my own of losing control, it's it's visceral to me. It, it feels mm-hmm. real, it feels threatening, and it, it feels plausible and compelling. For the other one with the glass, and I can see the pure logic in it, but it doesn't really, you know, grab a hold of me and make me anxious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now we're at the end. Learning points, obsessional doubts. They don't come out of the blue. Okay. We were talking about that. These aren't random. These aren't, ICBT does not see these as like random thoughts. It sees it as these come, these doubts come from a reasoning process. Okay. There's, there's logic behind your doubts. Yep. Prior reasoning. That makes Mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So at least four times a day, you can try to identify the doubt that motivated you to carry out your compulsions. And then this is kind of like what you did in, in uh, the first week. And then you're going to notice like, what are the citations that your doubt is using now? You know, these are the citations, the references, the footnotes. That'll be interesting, but yeah, I'll try to just look at it, take a step back and look at it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of today's session? It was good. It built on the previous one. So now there's that kind of that sequence, but now I was able to look at this one, like this reasoning process there from one to the other. So yeah, it was very informative and very eye-opening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then this week, you know, you don't have to keep tracking the sequence like on paper, but maybe you can just notice like if you still have a, you know, if you have an obsessional doubt, notice the sequence. A lot of times we call this like if we have a trigger, but really I see the trigger is like more downstream. So when you have that feeling, that trigger, look at what's the, the upstream doubt and then notice what logic your brain used to try to make it feel more powerful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything we could have done differently in this session to make it better, do you think? We we shared the screen, so that was a little different. <laughs> yeah, that was good. You know, it was nice to see the the worksheets on the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you prefer that or the paper? The screen works fine. That's yeah. good. Okay. Next week, we will dive into the story. We're moving our way, you know, we're moving right through the treatment as we were talking about in the free consult that, you know, we've got the iceberg. This is what we're, we're coming at different parts of the iceberg now. Right now we're yeah. hitting on the, we're hitting on the, the reasoning. Next week, we're going to hit on that narrative. And then the week after that, we're going to focus on hitting the, the vulnerable self. And we just keep doing more of this. I want to like skip ahead and get to these because <laughs> it's making sense. Yeah. It's see what's next. <laughs> yeah. We'll plan to hit the story next week. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Good job today, David. Thanks. (laughs) Bye. Bye.